Hey everyone, it is Dana here with Love Solo Flowers and we are going to do um, a pretty simple tutorial tonight, but it's something that we get asked a whole lot. So I thought, why not just address, um, you know, something that we've been getting questions about because we did have a video in our group on what we're going to do tonight, but it is outdated. It was before people were using glycerin and things like that. So I thought I'd make a whole new video on how to dye a peony or a flower that has kind of similar um, petals as a peony and how to keep it looking um, the way it should and getting all those spots covered. And also we'll just talk about the dyeing process in general for any of you who haven't seen any videos on dyeing yet. And we will talk about that um, the way that I do it. Um, and it's not the same way for everybody. So um, if you don't dye flowers the way I dye flowers, that's fine as long as your flowers are coming out. Um, but this is just an easy way for me to do them. I'm gonna show you what I do. Um, and then of course you just practice makes perfect. So um, we are gonna do, hey Martha, we are gonna do dyeing a peony tonight. Um, peonies are my favorite flower. Uh, if you do weddings, you probably get a lot of orders with peonies in them. Uh, and they're sometimes scary to dye for newbies, but uh, they're very easy actually. And it's really not much different than dyeing any other flower, but I'll just show you a couple tricks um, and hopefully it makes things easier. Again, this is kind of to replace our old video on dyeing peonies because um, some things have changed uh, in the way that we all kind of dye flowers now. Um, so I'll address a little bit about some of the things about dyeing and then a little bit about peonies and then how I do things like drying stuff and all of that. Now, we are having our big Valentine's Day sale, so it's up to 70%, yes, it's 70%, uh, up to 70% off on our website, lovesolaflowers.com, and there is no coupon needed, so everything that uh, is that you see with the discount is already discounted, so the price that you're putting in your cart is actually already discounted, and um, so uh, that sale is obviously limited time because it's a Valentine's Day sale. Uh, it is the largest sale we have, up to 70% off, except for like Black Friday and stuff. So if you do need to stock up, now would be the time. We have put a lot more stock in. So we have received a bunch of new flowers. Um, our containers are finally coming in. So we are, uh, you know, as soon as we get the flowers, we put them out. We do get asked a whole lot when this flower is going to be here, when that flower is going to be there. We are just waiting for things to come, but we don't hold on to them. You know, as soon as we get them, we put them back up on our, our website and restock them. So we're restocking as fast as we can, but there's tons of stock now and uh, some new flowers as well. You'll see on there. And again, it's up to 70% off. The website is lovesolaflowers.com. And if you want to join our community group where we get to share and encourage each other, it is facebook.com slash groups slash love solo flowers. And that is where our business kind of takes it to a community. So the community group is uh, connected to love solo flowers and uh, it's for our customers to be able to learn because some of you may just join and see maybe an ad or something like that and buy flowers and then don't know what to do with them. And we do have these videos here on our business Facebook page. We also have a YouTube channel, um, but the community group is where you can ask more of those kind of, you know, more complicated questions uh, and then also share your work so that you can, you know, be helped along in the process as well. So that was facebook.com slash groups slash love solo flowers. So uh, don't miss out on our sale. Again, it's limited time because it's a Valentine's Day sale and Valentine's Day is quickly approaching, but here we're gonna do dyeing a peony. And I'm gonna just show you the basics of dyeing as well. Again, some tricks that I use. Uh, if they don't work for you, then don't do them. Hey, Tracy, um, but I've got two closed peonies here. They are three inch ones, and uh, I'm gonna show you how to do those. Um, they do sometimes open just a little bit, but uh, in general, they keep their shape and when they bloom a little bit, they really look even to me more realistic than uh, as tight. Now, if you are looking for a tighter look on a peony, we suggest the closed one, okay? This is called closed peony. Um, our white peony is the one that has an open center. It looks like little, um, I don't know what you call centers of flowers like that just had those short little fluffy things in the inside. So those ones like open wider, but if you want to keep kind of the tighter look, 
the closed peony is the one to go for. Um, our peonies, we also have some with the yellow centers, um, but we have two inch and three inch uh, in the peony. This is the three inch, okay? All right. So what we're gonna do first is we gotta, this is just water, okay? It is colder water. So for my peonies, I use cold water, okay? Because the hotter the water, the softer uh, the petals go and they open up kind of extra. So I don't wanna put these in hot water because I don't want them to be so you know loose that they lose their shape. So I do cold water and I do dye my flowers in a baggie, a lot of times just for cleaning purposes and things like that, but I'll also show you another reason why I love doing it in a baggie. But that way I have my baggie and I put it in whatever container I'm gonna put it in and I'm not washing containers out. I'm not pouring paint down my sink, which is actually a big no-no, not just for your sink, because you don't want it to you know, crowd up, but also for the environment. So this way, whenever you're done, you can leave it open for a little bit, it dries out, and you zip it up, and you can throw it away in a trash all dried up, as opposed to pouring it anywhere. But this way, you can keep using the same containers. Um, this was from one of my boxes, and uh, I have just water in here. Again, I'm using cold water. I tend to use cold water for flowers that um, you know don't need to be really opened up because again, the point of dyeing the peony is to kind of keep it in its shape. Now, if you're gonna do something like a skinned flower where it's really hard or um, a flower that you're really wanting to manipulate, then you could use hot water and you can actually manipulate it better than you can with just cold water. But again, we're wanting to actually keep the peony kind of closed so we don't want it to be too hot or it might just kind of lose its shape completely so again for harder flowers stiffer flowers and you want to be able to maneuver them a little bit you can use hot water for that um okay so the next thing i'm gonna do and we have lots of questions about this and i'm actually going to try to make a little more condensed version of uh glycerin here I just put, literally, I, uh, you know, we, we, we joke around in the community group. We call it the bloop method because just the amount of time I say bloop is about as much glycerin I use. I know people ask us ratios and all of that stuff. Honestly, the quick drop in your bag has been the best method I've ever used. I've never been over glycerin and I've never been under glycerin. So, I, you know, I know people talk about ratios and colors and all of that. But honestly, what has worked for me, and I do thousands and thousands of flowers a month, is literally a bloop or a drop or a scoop of glycerin in my baggie, um, and then uh, I'm good. So <laughs> I'm gonna show you what glycerin I have. Um, I get mine from Amazon. It is just vegetable glycerin. Um, you can use any vegetable glycerin. Uh, this actually comes in even bigger bottles on Amazon as well, but I actually use this one because it auto ships for me so I never run out, but any vegetable glycerin is good, doesn't matter the brand, and I'm gonna show you again, I've got my baggie here just with water, I'll show you how much water, and it's cold, I don't heat up my glycerin or my water, and again, my flowers come out perfect every single time, but do what's best for you, maybe sometimes even water, you know, if you have hard water, soft water, maybe it changes things, but this works for me every time, um, my flowers always come out soft and squishy, and they never have a problem, so I take it, and I'm literally just going to, do you see that? I poured it, and by the time I said the word bloop and lifted it up, I'm good. So that's it. That's all I do with glycerin. It's not more complicated than that. I've never been over glycerin. I've never been under glycerin. That's it. A bloop, and you're good. Now, this is another reason why I like a baggie, okay? Because you don't need a spoon or a fork trying to get chunks or anything to mix it. You can just squeeze your baggie, and it mixes it. Again, this is cold water because I use cold water to dye my peonies so that they keep their shape. And I don't have a ton in here because, oh, there's my cat again. Everyone who always says my cat joins us here for our videos. But um, I don't use, I don't need a ton of water because I'm only doing two flowers. I try not to save paint. So I know some of you say, how long can you hold your paint and everything? I try not to overdo my mixing of paint. Um, I really only do as much as I need. Uh, I don't like to store it. I don't really have room to store it. And so that's why I only have a little bit here because I'm only gonna do two flowers. But here I am mixing up my glycerin in my water and that's all there is. So there was a little scoop of the glycerin mixed in with my cold water and that's it. No, no other problem with that. Now I've got that in my little container and I've got my paint. Again, I use the Bear brand paint because I have a local Home Depot. Um, they are about $5 for these little trial sizes. 
but some people tend to use craft paint because they feel like it's cheaper. But here's my experience. Again, my experience with craft paint is that you need way more of it to get as good of coverage as this. So although you're only spending, let's say a dollar on the container, you sometimes need multiple containers to get the same coverage as uh, a few drops of this. So again, you gotta price it out. Again, if you're only doing a couple flowers, maybe the little craft paint's not a big deal, but this is really what gives me the best coverage. And I've tried other even indoor house paints. I haven't loved uh, other brands, but if you have another hardware store that sells you the little trial sizes, you know, give it a try. Um, I always say don't dye, you know, a million flowers. If you're just starting, dye five flowers, you know, so don't ruin your whole your whole stock because you're excited to dye. Dye five flowers, make sure that they were soft enough, make sure that they're the way that you like them, and then do your whole batch because it's kind of, you know, playing with it. I've been doing this for five years now, so I kind of just naturally do it. But if you're new, don't ruin, you know, 100 flowers. Just, just get in there with a couple first. So I'm gonna open this. This is kind of like a pink color. My color is called, let's see, can you see it? Cran Apple Cream. So this is a really pretty pink. Um, it's a little bit deeper than a blush, but it's more not like um, not you know not like Barbie pink. So I think it's a a pretty pink that I like uh, even for Valentine's Day. So if you're looking for a nice pink, this is again called Cran Apple Cream. Now. This is kind of a basic concept, but I know we get a lot of questions about it, okay? How much paint to put in your water? So here's the deal with paints. Um, the darker the color, like navies and reds, will need more paint than they need water, and they will need more paint than a lighter color. But here's how it works when you're mixing. Again, do one flower. Don't do three million flowers and then go, oh, that was not mixed enough. I should have done more, okay? Do one or two flowers to get your color right and then do your whole batch. But the thing to remember is the more paint in your water, the more bold your color and the closer your color will be to what's in your canister. The more you water it down, the more, um, you know, the, the not, the, you know, it's, it's not as opaque. It's kind of, you know, not, it's not translucent, but you know what I mean? It, it won't cover uh, as much of the wood as if you added more paint. So just play around with your measurements. But if you have a color like red or hot pink or even orange or navy blue or any of those kind of darker colors, you're going to need more paint than you need water because if you water down red, you get pink. And if you don't want pink, then, then don't water it down so much, okay? So again, you're just gonna add paint to paint, you know, start with a little bit, squish it up, see maybe one flower, and then keep adding from there until you get your desired color. Again, the more paint you have, the closer it is to the canister, but you don't want it to be so thick that it's gooped everywhere. So again, it's really just playing with it. It's learning what each color takes. Um, but with this lighter pink, it really doesn't matter too much uh, my ratio because it's a light color. So I'm just gonna pour in some paint. And this is all, again, this is all you do. My glycerin's already in my water and I mixed the glycerin by squeezing the bottom of my baggie nice and good so that it was mixed in my paint before I, I mean my water before I added my paint. So I'm gonna just take this again, see it's not mixed. And again, this is another reason why I like my baggies. I'm not wasting plastic spoons, trying to scoop paint off the edges, trying to mix it well, trying to get the chunks out. Literally, I'm just squishing the bottom of my baggie and I do it for a few minutes until my paint, water, and glycerin mixture is kind of in milky consistency. Again, so for these kind of colors, the lighter colors, a thick kind of creamy, milky, um, consistency is good for reds and the navies and oranges and things like that, um, a little thicker, okay? So it won't be as watery for those kind of colors. Again, people ask us ratios all the time. There is no ratio that's just playing around until you get your desired color. Um, but don't, again, don't do a batch of like 1,500 flowers and then be like, oh wow, my red looks pink. Do a few flowers. Usually what you dip them is in is what they dry in. So it's not like you have to wait 24 hours to see the color. You know, after 15 minutes, you'll see basically what it's gonna look like. So I've mixed it completely in my baggie and I'm gonna just put it in here so it doesn't spill. And I got that. Now again, this is cold and now this has my glycerin and my paint in it. 
So I do see that we have um, a lot more people coming to the video uh, than when we started. So I wanna just pause real fast and let you know again um, on our website, which is lovesolaflowers.com. That's L-U-V, love, sola, S-O-L-A, flowers.com. We are having our big Valentine's Day sale. That's why I wore my pink. And uh, it's up to 70% off, which, which is one of our highest discounts that we offer. Uh, besides like a Black Friday. So it's a big discount if you're needing to stock up and if you've waited for some flowers to come in stock, now's the time to do it. Also, if you love a flower um, that you're afraid is gonna go out of stock, now's the time to grab them again because they're up to 70% off and we don't have this sale very, very often. So go ahead and you stock up on the things that you love to make sure that you get them. The There's no co coupon code necessary. Uh, the price is already discounted, so you just stick them in your cart and that's the price that they're gonna be at the end. So I just wanted to share that part too. This again is called a closed peony and we're showing you how to dye this because we get a lot of questions because it is very curled up and people are afraid it's gonna unravel and some you know, our curled flowers do unravel in water but this is not really curled, this is pinched. And I'm gonna show you how I get the best look of my peonies and this is cold water again. I don't use hot water for the peonies because I don't want them to be so soft that they lose their shape. So what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna stick my peony in there, but I'm gonna, let me see if I can get a good angle. Let me explain it before I start to do it, that way you'll know what I'm doing. So I'm gonna stick it down in, and then I'm gonna like scoop my hand back around so that it goes down in there. And when I spin it like this, it starts to fill up the center. And that way I don't have to just keep it dunked in so long, I'm gonna scoop it all up and rotate it around so that it fills all those inside petals. So I'm gonna show you how to do that right now. Okay, so again, I do it in the baggie. Um, other flowers that aren't curled that you're not so, you know, caring about their shape, you can actually just stick right down in the baggie, zip the baggie up and shake it up and that's all you need to do. But for our peony, we're gonna be a little more delicate. I don't do multiple ones at the same time. So I stuck it in and now I'm gonna rotate it around and I pull it out. See how I'm spinning it? That way it fills up those center petals. I'm gonna let it drip out, but do you see I didn't lose my shape because I'm nice and cold. And if you do kind of have it opened up a little too much, you can put it down in your hand like this and you just cup it, okay? Let it shake out while you have it cupped. I press down a little bit to make those petals in the top, you know, knock against my skin down there. And as you can see, I have a cookie sheet here with um, the little grates or whatever. I don't know what you call this. What do you call this? Like the little grills for the cookie sheets. So this is what I dry it on. And we no longer, obviously, uh, in the olden days, <laughs> we, in our group, we did show you how you could um, maybe oven dry them if you have it on a very low heat. But we don't suggest that anymore. We don't really want anyone to breathe in toxins. With the glycerin in it, it does smoke differently. And we had, you know, we did different things kind of back then. So dry it on a drying rack. In a few hours, they almost dry if you use a, a fan, a high-powered fan. But as you can see, it kept its shape nice and tight. Again, if you want it a little more open, you can do that as well. Look, if I wanna just tap it open just a little bit. But my edges stayed curled. Basically, it's almost the exact same shape as it came. And I'm just gonna put it down on my thing. And that's it. Again, if you put a fan on it, it dries them faster, which is better for a peony. It's better for peonies to dry faster. The longer they stay wet, the longer they may open up, the longer they may kind of lose a little bit of their scrunch there. So you want them to dry quickly, okay? So I put them on my rack and then I have a fan that I literally can aim down right on it. And peonies actually dry very, very fast because they're kind of thin petals and they're nice and open. There's nothing tight in there. Um, but we do always want to tell you, do not pack wet flowers uh, in an airtight container. You will be molded because you're keeping moisture airtight. But also, if you think your flowers dry and it's only 24 hours or something like that, still don't do it because the center of your flowers will stay wetter longer than the outside feels dry, okay? Does that make sense? So all those little ties of tight petals on the inside stay wet even when the rest of the flower feels dry. So give it a few days. I don't pack any dyed flowers for like four days and I still leave the box open. So I put them in, in cardboard boxes. I never do anything airtight. If you do wanna use tubs, 
then make sure that you have drilled a bunch of holes in the tub um, or just leave the lid off completely. Um, but make sure you drill holes and even throw some of the silica packets in there if you, uh, you know, if you're a little bit concerned. But I give it at least four days before I combine them into a box or anything or ship them or any of that kind of stuff. Okay. Okay. I'm going to do my last peony too because we did that one. As you can see, it's staying in the shape. Um, as we had it again, I've got my cold water paint, bare brand paint and my glycerin here in my baggie. And I'm just going to dye my other one just to show you again, if you're just joining, I'm going to stick it down in there and I'm going to rotate it around. Yeah, that's a good idea. I have one of those really big, 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 big fans. And now when I bring it back up, I'm just going to spin it around so it makes its way through the scoops of those petals. Shake it out. You know, you don't want to waste any of your paint. Put my paint down here. And then again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in my hand if I want to keep it nice and tight. Roxanne, um, I, we will share this video after uh, I'm done with it, but I did show uh, how to make the mixture. I use Bear Brand. Here, we go. let me show you. Bear Brand in the trial sizes. It covers really well. You get that at the Home Depot. Um, and it's about $5 for the container, but it goes a long way. Like this pink one, uh, this size could do at least 100 flowers. So Although it looks like maybe you're spending more than a craft paint, let's say, you're not really when it comes to doing lots of flowers because um, they have better coverage and all of that. So again, I'm just tapping it in my hand. I'm pressing down a little bit so the petals stay uh, squished. This color is called Crayon Apple Cream. It is perfect for Valentine's Day. It's kind of got like a blushy, rosy tone, but, um, but still in the pink family. So I love this. Hi, Elsie. Okay, so then I flip it over. Look how tight it stayed its shape. Again, my water's cold. I don't use hot water. Some people only mix their, I, I, I don't do the whole, you know, boil your water, mix the glycerin thingamabob. I just squish it around my baggie and mix it that way because the cold, again, will keep your shape better than a hot water. Hi, Mandy. So then after I'm done with that, again, we are drying peonies on racks now. Let's not use, um, an oven if you if you don't have to if you are you have to leave it cracked and all this other stuff because the glycerin really does smoke so we're just going to leave it on our rack and be patient with a fan again usually my fan dries them within a couple hours um, and i'm able to kind of use them um, but i don't ever airtight it or anything else for about three or four days um not airtight it but put it in like a a bin okay so here are my peonies. As you can tell, they're perfect. Uh, the faster, again, the faster you dry them, so a fan is kind of the better choice, the more they don't open, because as you can see, sometimes the weight of the wetness kind of opens up the petals, but I like them open. For me, I don't like a peony super tight. I do like a more open peony. I love how it looks. Uh, let me hold it up again. This is the Cran Apple Cream by Bear Brand. Uh, as you know, you know, the petals are flexible when they're wet. So we're just going to put it here to dry. And that's basically how you dye a peony. Now, again, also how you would dye other flowers. The same way I mixed for this, I mix for all my other flowers. And again, I just, I don't do any ratios. So um, it's just, I do a drop of glycerin in a pile of water and paint. And that's just kind of how I, how I wing it. So just, you know, experiment try it out a little bit. Again, I like to dry them here, but if you are drying it here, make sure you lift it up every so often after like an hour, maybe lift it so that the bottom doesn't stick. But for me, um, if, if you dry it by fan um, and you have glycerin in it, it doesn't stick too much. And I always kind of have it at the very bottom there so that if it does pull the bottom just a little bit, no one's going to see it. It's the bottom of your flower. It's either going on a picture frame or a heart board or with a stem on it. So that is how uh, we are doing our peonies these days with glycerin um, so they can stay soft, but they still stay closed. Again, this is called the closed peony. We also have uh, the white peony plus the regular peony, which has some yellow in the center, which you can dye and the yellow stamens stay yellow, which is great. Uh, if you've not gone to our website yet to see, we have up to 70% off on regular solar flowers and then, you know, discounts on, on a bunch of other stuff on there. Uh, if you love a flower and you're afraid that it could go out of stock, 
buy it now during the big sale because you know stock is not as easy to get for us as it always has been but we do put it on our website as fast as possible so uh, if you're worried about a flower we're not holding on to them we put them right on the website that's lovesoloflowers.com and again our community group is facebook.com slash groups slash lovesoloflowers all of our videos start here on our business page so that they're live and you can ask questions. And even in the replay, when you ask questions, we will always respond to them. But we also take these videos and we put them on YouTube because uh, YouTube is the only way to do a search right now. Facebook, uh, I don't know if it's a glitch or that's just what they decided, but Facebook, the videos don't have the titles that we give them. So you can't really search through. You just kind of got to see what I'm looking like at the beginning. And that can get confusing. So if you felt like you've been struggling searching for videos, uh, just go to YouTube. And what I do for YouTube, even when I'm looking up video, if you just type in love solo flowers and then whatever topic you're looking for. So if you do love solo flowers, heartboard, my video will come up. Love solo flowers, peony, the video will come up. So we do label them there. You can just subscribe to our channel and then you can sort through all of the videos we've ever had. But if you're looking for something specific on YouTube, you can just literally type in Love Solo Flowers and then what you're looking for. Um, dyeing, stemming, fluffing, all of that kind of stuff. So it's fun to uh, be able to search now on YouTube because uh, it's sometimes we know it's difficult on our Facebook business page, but um, YouTube makes it very easy to do the search. So try that out. So I hope you guys have a really good night. Have a very, very, very good Valentine's Day because the next time I'll see you, Valentine's will be over and we will move to the next holiday and we'll start to do some more crafting. We did want to do some more of these kind of basic things because, you know, as, as we get different techniques, number one, but also, you know, as more people join the Love Sola family, um, with some of these basic things we get a lot of questions about. So we did a bunch of basics. Now we're going to start making more stuff again. So we're going to come up with some creative ideas uh, to decorate your house uh, and to do more projects uh, in the next few weeks. So, all right, guys, I hope you have a really good night. Bye, everyone.